I wanted to ask you what it's like to be a woman at the helm of an organization like the National Center for Science Education. Are there specific challenges that you face that a man may not face? You know, I think the, um, the nonprofit world has been very, very welcoming to women. Um, there are a lot of nonprofit managers who are female. Um, it, it, it hasn't been a field, I don't think, where there's been uh, structural or institutional barriers. I don't know that much about the uh, very, very top level, the, the really huge organizations, the you know, United Ways and, and some of these, but even they have had, uh, ha have had female managers. So I don't think there's the, there are the institutional barriers that you find in, in many other professions. Engineering, for example, is, is notorious for having um, uh, institutional barriers toward women, just the acceptance of women into the uh, pipeline has been uh, uh, very difficult in some fields. Well, it's just good to hear. One of the things I find interesting about what you do is the, the sort of dynamic you have with the opposition. I mean, you're going up against generally men who, who hold on to um, a f a fairly archaic uh, belief systems that have a lot of misogynistic elements mm -hmm. woven throughout them. Do you ever experience any direct backlash uh, because you're a woman? Not that I've ever noticed, frankly. Um, it's just you enough know, that I you're think, putting them in their um, place. And <laughs> no, I, I, I've never noticed that before. Well, number one, I don't do debates. You know, I yeah. don't do formal debates where you know one person on one side of the stage, another on the other side of the stage, and and you, you know, because that's not how we do science, and it just misleads the public. You know, debate is a sport. It's not right. how we do science, and so I don't have those kinds of of of, of interactions with uh, creationists or people who disagree with me. I will go on radio and television shows and stuff. Um, frankly, I think being female is is uh, or maybe just my own you know idiosyncratic personality is an advantage because i'm i, I don't get ruffled very easily <laughs> low testosterone or something i don't know <laughs> but um i if i'm on the radio show with a creationist um what's my goal okay my goal is to try to i'm not talking to him okay I'm talking to the audience. I want the audience that's listening to this exchange to learn a little bit more about science, learn a little bit more about evolution, and realize that you know it's, evolution isn't necessarily going to hurt them. Uh, and it's a really important part of science that ought to be in schools. Those are my goals. His goals are to discredit evolution, and in many cases discredit evolutionists because uh, part of their message is the equation of evolution with atheism. And uh, atheism, of course, has the connotation in that community of people who don't have ethical standards and they're bad people and they you know, fold, spindle, and mutilate or whatever. Um, so, um, you know, he's going to, there, there's an effort to demonize me or any other person sitting opposite the, the table there. Um, I'm kind of hard to demonize. <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> I'm not a really demonizable kind yeah. of person. Even the people who disagree with me, you know, tend to say, "Well, she's actually kind of nice, but we we think her ideas are really dumb." But <laughs> but, but you're out there in the middle of it. You're out there getting things yeah. done. Do you ever do you ever notice any biases against women in skepticism or in science, simply for for the fact that they are women and may be perceived as being. Uh, overly emotional and not as logical and rational as, as a, a skeptic or a scientist needs to be? You know, the skeptics movement is, has been a really fascinating one. And I got an, interested in skepticism like back in the 60s when it was first getting started. The, the Zetetic, you know, the, <laughs> the little funny journal that, that um, preceded Skeptical Inquirer, you know, yeah. back in the day. And uh, yeah, the, the founders of the skeptics movement back in the 60s were largely white males. Um, and females were kind of an afterthought. It wasn't, I think it, was, it took until the s late 70s, maybe even the early 80s, before I and very many other women were added as fellows to PSYCOP. Uh, probably was in the 80s, come to think of it. And, you know, but it was started by a bunch of guys my age now, um, uh, you know, uh, back in the 60s. Um, and 
the attitude back then, was, you know, th that, that was when the, uh, the sexual revolution was taking place, and that's when, uh, I mean, my generation was really, really the first generation to um, kind of make that transition from uh, looking at yourself as somebody who went to college um, uh, so you could get a better husband, because your goal was to get get a good husband and raise a family, and and you know, but the idea of women be having actual careers um, beyond nursing and and education, which were sort of the normal jobs for women, a woman being a CEO of a big company was something that was really quite startling, and any woman who did that was a career woman yeah. who gave up family and husband and those kinds of things. You really had these two paths. So, you know, the people don't remember, many people don't remember, the 60s really were, you know, and, and the early 70s was a time of a tremendous social revolution in the United States where, you know, women started realizing uh, and society started realizing what women could do after, you know, I, I mean, there's a whole long history of this and, and feminism is, has an interesting history in general. But, you know, not to fault the founders of the, of the skeptical movement, but they were, they were emerging from that milieu where women weren't taken terribly seriously and it took a while before uh, women started becoming professionals in, in larger numbers. Um, nowadays, when you look uh, at college enrollments, uh, when you look even in the sciences, uh, there's a substantial percentage. I'm sorry, I don't have the uh, percentages in my brain right That's now. Okay. In the social sciences, it's over half of the women in graduate um, programs are female. And in the biological sciences, it's close to half. In the physical sciences, it's still lagging some. And in engineering is, is the, 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 the smallest percentage. But it's still so much larger than it was a couple decades ago. And I've seen the skeptics movement changing in that same kind of pattern. Um, when I st first started going or was invited to speak at skeptics uh, meetings, uh, most of the people were older and most of the people were male in the audience. Mm -hmm. Most of the people on the dais with me were, were males, uh, a couple of females maybe once in a while. Um, and I've seen that change and it's been terrific. And, and the best change, frankly, is the number of young people coming into the skeptics movement. Uh, and this, I think, largely is a result of, of uh, digital communications, largely a result of, of the Internet, yeah. not having to be in any particular location, uh, being able to correspond and communicate with like-minded people uh, all over the world. I mean, it's been a wonderful opportunity to, to grow a movement uh, like the anti-pseudoscience movement. Right. <laughs>